Hi, welcome. My name is Mackenzie Murray. I'm the social media manager here at the Dallas Opera, and I'm here today with Morris Robinson, and he will be playing the Commendatore in Don Giovanni. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that bass? It's amazing. <laughs> so we just had a couple questions. We want to do a, Q a quick Q and A um, just to get to know you better, and so our audience get to know you. Um, so I just wanted to ask, uh, having played the Commendatore in the past. Did I do it wrong again? No, you got it right. It was okay, great. Okay. It was really good. <laughs> <laughs> How will you approach this role in this production? Well, every production I've played has been different. Actually, I changed that. I've done the production I did here last time three times. So, but every time you reprise a role, you have to have a different mental approach to it. Um, it depends on the people that I'm working with, the cast, the cast that I'm working with, uh, the director, and what he wants to accomplish, what kind of message he wants to convey. Uh, I was shot the last time I did this. I'm getting shot this time. <laughs> I'm dying differently. The shot is delayed, so it happens after the music. There's a climax point that Mozart wrote, but we're doing this after the fact, so I actually have to act more if the music doesn't carry me. Um, and, you know, when those things happen, you have to rely on different, a different set of skills. Uh, one, uh, I allow the music to lead me, and in this particular instance, I have to be more of an actor, so I'm enjoying that part. Uh, you know, and everything's different. I mean, Marius Kuechen is my Giovanni this time. I've done it with him before. Uh, the last time we did it together was at Tanglewood, so it was, st oh. was semi-stage concert version. So this time we actually get to interact, and uh, you know, he has his own way of towering over me when he kills me, so I have to get used to that. Marius actually sits on me while I'm laying down. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, I had to bench press him the other day and say, get your butt off me. But no, I mean, it's, uh, it's all, all a new experience, and I try to do things to make sure that I keep the role fresh with fresh ideas and, and interaction, so yeah. Okay. Awesome. So could you tell me a little bit about yourself and what inspired you to come down this opera or singing career path? You know, I'm a little more about myself. I'm just a bass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your basic bass. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, my, my career path to this, this art form was very different. It wasn't traditional. Uh, I started studying music at the age of 30 after a career in corporate America. Uh, the, the big story is I was a ball player beforehand. Yes, everybody. Uh, <laughs> no, he's a big ball player. I love it. I'm a big ex-ball player now, so i got to get <laughs> yes. my butt back to the gym. But uh, no, I mean, you know, I, I've always talked about, and I know you asked how I got here, but I think importantly I'd like for people to understand that, you know, the transferable skills I learned as an athlete helped me in the operating career. You need discipline. You need, obviously you need to be coachable. You need flexibility. You need to know teamwork, you know, because we're a team here. You know, everyone has a responsibility. Um, you know, personal accountability. Uh, you know, the ability to adapt and change. I mean, things happen in a lot of performances that you have to be ready, you, you don't know what's gonna happen, yeah. so you have to be ready to make those adjustments. But my career path is non-traditional. I started studying at the age of 30 in Boston, at the Boston University Opera Institute. I got my first roles at Boston Lyric Opera and the Commendatory was actually one of my first roles ever. See? I never knew that, I'm, and one of the guys that taught me the role uh, said, you're gonna, you're, you're gonna sing this for the rest of your life. I'm like, you, you think so? Well, I've made a lot of very important debuts singing the Commendatory, <laughs> and I'm still seeing it, so it's kind of cool. That's awesome. Yeah. That's nice to know that there's a character that you can always resonate to to go back to. Well, as a real bass, uh, oftentimes, you know, there's a, there's a set number of things in the repertoire that we sing, and generally we're God's fathers, priests, devils, kings. In this instance, I'm a father. But, uh, you know, once you get your, your, your hand wrapped around that set repertoire, if you will, you know, some things you get to revisit often. A commendatory is always great to come back to. I love singing Mozart. Uh, I do a lot of Zarostros as well, which is a totally different type of singing, but uh, I enjoy singing it. I enjoy the role, so yeah. So, like, if, how do you find inspiration, or who, are, are there any other artists that you are inspired by? Well, you know, there are, obviously, I mean, I'm a bass, so I listen to a lot of basses, uh, but Naldo Giotti is my favorite bass on a lot of recordings. I've learned a lot of things listening to him. Uh, I've listened to Nikolai Garov, obviously, Sam Raimi, who I've got a chance to sing with, learned a lot from him. Robert Lloyd uh, taught me a lot, Paul Kliska, I mean, Kurt Mole, you know, these are my guys. Um, you know, Jerome Hines, the southerner, and had that big, huge voice, yeah. and I, I love his sound. Uh, so I can't say that I have a favorite. I mean, if I'm going to learn one thing, I'll listen to this guy. If I want to hear something else, I'll listen to this guy. But I do have a set number of people that I, I, I go to. Uh, Nowadays, I listen to some of the young cats that are coming out. You yeah. Know? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm inspired now more so than just musically. I'm inspired by the stories and the success of people that I've 
grown to know personally. So that inspires me to keep going. Awesome. That's really inspiring to hear. <laughs> There's that word again. <laughs> there it is. It's just like you keep repeating it. <laughs> or I keep repeating it. So do you have any interests or hobbies that you like to do in your free time? You know, I like to fish. I don't have much time to do so. Okay. Uh, I like spending time with my kid. You know, he's that's becoming far and far less now because he's 12 years old and he's got a group of friends he likes yeah, to hang out with and they play video now. games. I was trying to get him to come out to Dallas and I said, Miles, are you going to spend your spring break with me? And he's like, uh, I don't know. I mean, I'd like to. What kind of pool do you have in your apartment, Dad? And I was like, I don't know why that's important, but I have an outdoor pool. He says, I prefer an indoor pool. I think I'm going to stay home with my friend. <laughs> he bought himself a way out. But no, I mean, I enjoy fishing. I enjoy listening to a variety of music, you know, gospel music, R&B, hip hop. I'm listening to that more so than opera. Yeah. Uh, it's just my outlet. It's the things that I enjoy. But I also think that it fuels my ability to, to, to be musically expressive in what I do. You know. So. Yeah, I think if anybody sees like your Instagram, they can see that you do mix like a lot of hip hop with classical. And I mean, I mean that's why I come back to your page every day. It's just like, <laughs> what is more Scott going for today? You know, well, follow me on Instagram. You see a lot of interesting things. <laughs> yes, we'll but, have his link put in somewhere in the video for you. <laughs> you no, know, I think it's you know, I mean, I think more so with that. I have a brand. Mm -hmm. My brand is uh, in the opera world is what it is. But I also like to exemplify and show people that I'm very much a regular person. So when I'm home, I'm doing carpools, or I'm going to karate practice, or I'm uh, taking a dog to daycare. You know, I, I like to show the, the, the person side of me because most people only know me as the guy that plays a commendatory or the Grand Inquisitor or Zacharia, and they get an autograph and take a selfie and, you know, that's what they see. I like for people to understand that there is no stereotypical opera singer. You know, we look like we have all different types of looks, shapes, and sizes. And uh, that's what I try to display when I'm use, utilizing social media. So, okay. yeah. Awesome. Um, so, do you have a dream role, or if you don't, is there? Have you played a favorite role? You know, it, it was Ron Fitzgerald. It was my favorite role up until I started singing Zachariah in uh, Nabucco. I think that uh, you know I enjoy. I'm a former ball player. I'm a big dude. I like you know to command the room, so to speak. And these are the types of characters that walk in and command attention. Mm -hmm. And it feels it feeds right into my natural personality. The commendatory is the same way, except he gets shot for a scene and dies. But, you know, but uh, no, I enjoy you know the authoritative type of figures. And most recently, I just started singing Poor Game, Poor Game Best, which I never thought I would do. I never thought that I would enjoy because he is considered, in my opinion, before studying the role, the underdog, the kick puppy, the, the one everyone feels sorry for because he's just poor little porgy. But, you know, even he, I think, has a lot of character. He's the strongest person in the opera. He, you know, he really is kind of gangster because that, yeah, somewhere in the opera, he decides the only way I'm going to keep best is if I murder Crown. Yeah. Like the neighborhood bully. So, and he has the ability, he pulls it off. He kills the baddest guy in the show, which means he's ultimately the baddest guy in the show. So, I always say that even he's a strong character. His legs just don't work. So, you know, I enjoy those types of characters. I enjoy the authoritative figures in my voice mm -hmm. because of my bass actually feeds into that. So everything that comes my way kind of, kind of fits. You know? I like that. Yeah. I like that. I feel like it's, I'm a little bit extra. So I do like to, when I walk into a room to like command it and everybody's <laughs> like, is that Mackenzie? And I'm like, yeah. Well, you're tall, you know. <laughs> you know, presence has a lot yes. to do with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so what's next for Mr. Robinson? So what's next with me, for me? I actually, after we've seen the second show here in Dallas, I have to fly to Los Angeles after that show, which is a matinee, to start rehearsing in Los Angeles. Oh. I'm doing Rigoletto in Los Angeles Opera with Leo Nucci, okay. uh, another one of my favorite singers. So I'll be flying to LA and rehearsing in LA, then flying back to Dallas and doing the show the next day. So that commuting will happen. I think there are four round trips involved with that, so oh, I've been wow. really busy. Are you, do you wear those like masks I see people wear? Like the No, and I probably should because the Dallas, look, if you ever come to see me in Dallas, <laughs> bring your allergy medicine because it does not play around here. Um, but no, I don't wear a mask. I just try to stay healthy. Um, I've been very blessed in my career that I generally get sick in between gigs. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to have that opportunity now because these gigs are overlapping. After that, I go and sing a Beethoven Ninth, and then I do the Mahler Eighth at the BBC Proms. Oh, wow. Um, in London, so yeah, I'm staying really busy. Okay, very, well, very we busy. will definitely be keeping our eye out and like you know making sure we see you and we promote you. <laughs> oh well, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you so much for doing this interview. I hope everyone gets to know Morris and comes come down to the Windsor Opera House and see Don Giovanni. Thank oh, you. Get it. <laughs>